One of the sad stories for me was when you referred to when you were about six years old and you were homesick, you know, you were on the road touring at six, which mm. people watching this will find extraordinary. I know where you're going on this. That particular story hit me a bit, actually. Yeah, it hit me hard, too. <laughs> you know, in hindsight, I wrote a letter. I was about six or seven, as you say. I was in Sweden. And I wanted to come home. I wanted to go back to the sandbox. I wanted to go see my buddy Scott Bramwell. I wanted, I wanted that life again. Because it was too hard out on the road. Yes, it's glamorous, but it's difficult being out on the road, especially as a six-year-old. Doing three shows a day, each day in a different town, setting up our own sound and lights. How do you do that at six years old? But I did. I had to. And my father found the letter and, uh, and uh, didn't like it. And... Uh, can we talk about something else? I can tell by your reaction that even now, looking back on that, you find it quite sad that you, you almost lost your innocence as a child. It's kind of provoked some interesting thoughts in my mind that, that I've never really explored, and that is maybe the reason I feel that way is because of what I've been through in my life. Let's just suppose here for a second that I never lost my career that I never went through the teeny bopper image. Let's suppose the Donnie and Marie show wasn't canceled, that it was our choice to quit. Let's suppose my life was easy. Then I probably would feel a little bit different about that letter. I'd probably feel a little bit different about closing the volume when I was three years old of that book that would never open again. But Pierce, Again, you know what I've been through in my life. You know what it's like to be in show business. You know what rejection is all about. So, having said that, and trying to control the emotions, um, I can't look back with any regret. If I could have said to you, Donnie, I'm gonna put you back into that Utah town. You're three years old and you're going to lead a very normal life in Utah without any of the celebrity status that came your way and had a very, in many ways, often cataclysmic effect on your life. Would you take that deal? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it would. How many of your family do you think would? Every one of them. Yeah, every one. It's an easier life. It's an easier life. At some point you think you matter so much to everything and everybody that you end up tripping yourself, you know? I think the moment Donnie just stopped, relaxed, and realized that he'd just be himself, everybody loved him, everybody accepted him. He is so determined and persistent, and that's why he's successful, because it's per his determination, persistence, and he's never lost focus. A simple life in Utah may have been, ultimately, an easier one for Donny. But this is a man who never gives up. Back in the 70s, we may have seen him as some soft-centered teeny bopper idol. But the fact is, Donny Osmond is nothing, if not a fighter. He'll reinvent himself again or something. Play grandpa parts when he's 90. It's great to see Donnie back again with his, he's got a TV show now, I think, hasn't he? And all sorts of things going on in the States for him and musicals and great. I hope he becomes huge again and ditches his wife and marries me. I'm kidding. The affection that people still have for him is that that's my adolescence and it was innocent and um, it was intense and you were part of it, and I think that's why the bonds for a lot of women are very, very strong. People respond to him like flowers to sunshine. He's smart as paint, he's talented, 
he's witty, he's self-deprecating. What's not to like? He won't go away. Donnie will not go away. And he Donnie never will. will be there. <laughs> he will be he there. Will be, he will be in show business 50 years from now, I yeah, guarantee absolutely. it. Absolutely. Guarantee it. When he's 100 years old. I'm having the time of my life being a recording artist, uh, a game show host. Uh, I'm touring, coming up soon. Uh, I mean, he's still working, and I'm so lucky. And that's... Would, would you say that you're as happy now as you've maybe ever been? Well, uh, probably the word is content. You know, there are times in my life I was really, really happy. You know, with selling out stadiums and things like that. It's not the Donny Osmond of the 70s anymore. See, I think, Donny, having spoken to you at length now, you'll only be truly content when you can look at me straight in the eye and sing Puppy Love. <laughs>